Welcome back to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS, presented by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. Now, it's real time. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you very much for watching the show this morning. One of the best parts about being the only live interactive fishing and hunting television show that's ever existed is that you can get the professionals in here on a Saturday when you would actually love to be fishing, and I know that you'd probably rather be doing that as well. Uh, but we're here with Jason Hambly, Steve Lynch from Procure. First thing, it's good to see you, man. Good to see you. Last time I saw you, you were floating by me on <laughs> some local river around here with the camera in your yeah. face. Anyway. <laughs> We won't talk about that right now. Uh, do you ever get any flack at all? Oh, all the time. Ah, oh, thank you. I had yeah. to throw it in there. Oh, I, yeah. I know what you mean, man. <laughs> Listen, I live that life every day. A lot How of haters. Been? Good, been very good. Have you, have you uh, anything fun? Have you, any traveling, anything like that? Starting in a week and a half, I'll go to Alaska and do the ice fishing. Game. Ice fishing? Yeah, every year. Right after sh all the shows are over, I go up there with buddies for four days. And right. Just fish. What are you fishing for? Uh, big lake trout and burbot. Burbot? Yeah. Okay. Goofiest looking fish ever. I heard it was delicious it's, though. It's freshwater lean cod is what it, I mean, basically, okay. yeah, it tastes just like lean cod. Better than a walleye? Mm, not a fresh walleye. Okay, no. okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. we got a lot of those close to home too. Yeah. Although in Washington, you got burbot too in the right, in the right lakes. Yeah. Okay. So today, I thought it was the perfect timing, right? It's the end of March. We got one week left on the Columbia. Uh, most people out there below Bonneville are going to be trolling. N not everyone, but most folks are going to be trolling. Uh, herring of some kind. Yep. Um, a lot of folks are going to be running any of the Brads uh, or even Simon or even any, any other <laughs> version of stuffer baits out there. Yakima baits, spinning fish. Uh, so there's al also options there. But today I thought it'd be perfect to talk about herring. Last week I talked about how I like to do just a basic brine. Uh, got some traction, but we're going to talk about what these guys like to do. Uh, also, what thought it'd be a good time to talk about prawns and coon shrimp, maybe what to do there. You just recently uh, cured some up. Yep. And I know that there's been a lot of folks out there trying to buy some. You mentioned it before the show, at least the guys that I know that have been trying to buy it on their own to cure their own uh, uh, coon shrimp and prawns up. It's been very difficult to find anything of quality as far as baits yep. that are really good before you cure them. Is it, is it all across the board? It's across the board. I mean, the hoods are just hollow. There's nothing to them, and I mean, if so, if it's bad bait starting out, you can cure it, but it's still gonna be bad bait at right. the end. Right. In the end, it's just not gonna be what you're looking for. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any advice? Because folks are right now. Yesterday, we went and bought a couple of crab for um, for Good Friday dinner, right? Yeah. There were some yeah. guys that were in there buying prawns because they were gonna cure them up. Fresh prawns, at least, is what they say. Uh, raw prawns, but frozen. Uh, any advice for those folks that are trying to do this? Is it, is it pick through them? Or is it just cure them and, and hope for the best? What, any advice there? Well, I think any fresh bait that you've cured is better than b better than no bait. Right. But, yeah, try to pick through them. I mean, if the hoods, when you go to grab them, are hollow, if they squish them really easy, mm -hmm. curing them is not going to make them any firmer. All it's going to do is crust up, you know, make, make the hood really, really uh, brittle. Sure. So when you go to put a hook through it, it's just going to split. Right. So if they're truly that hollow in the hood, they're not going to fish well. All right, well, here's my advice. Take the tails, cut them up into chunks, and, and use some of the uh, Procure eggs, whatever version you want, and cure up a bunch of uh, those little shrimp chunks, whatever it might be, and use that for steelhead bait later on. There you go. Uh, it's actually a very, very good little bait. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I got to ask you, yep. how was your uh, winter steelhead season overall? It was good. The fishing was excellent this year, considering. Mm -hmm. And the only hard part is, is that's our show season. Right. So I don't get as many days on the water as I'd like. But right. when I was out there, it was a it was good good season this year. Have you switched gears yet to salmon? Or? I haven't even been spring chinook fishing yet. Uh, when is no. when are you planning to get out there? Oh, probably after it closes. <laughs> I'll probably head, <laughs> head over to the Willamette and yeah. do that. But it's. It's hard when this early season to get the ambition to go out on the Columbia. Yeah, especially, you know, it's not like it was 10 years ago, and I hate to say that, right. you know, where we could do so well uh, from the lower Columbia all the way up to Bonneville yeah. really early in the season. It just doesn't seem like that's the case. And But they're still closing it the first week yeah. of April yeah. like they always have, and then the fish show up after the fact. Yeah. So it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic. We'll just have to see how things kind of play out um, on that note. But... So my question to you would be, if somebody is out there chasing these things around, yeah. uh, especially from now through the end of this upcoming week, or this week, um, any advice that you would give as far as what to do with herring, colors, scent, 
Anything oh, yeah, that might be an advantage in these sorts of conditions? Most definitely. If the turbidity is moving up a little, it never hurts to have some chartreuse baits in there as well as blue. Okay. And just different colors and just try different scents until you find whatever they're snapping on that day. Now, with the different colors, yeah. <clears throat> we got this question after this, uh, this past week's show. Do you add specific scents to a color? Like if you dyed them blue, do you put a specific scent to that? Or if you dye them chartreuse, do you put a specific scent to that? Do you ever break up what that scent is for that color? Not, I, I haven't really necked it down that much, but mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll just, I'll every single bait, I'll try something different until I find something that works. And it, again, Springer's hard. It's, it's you don't, a lot of times you're not having multiple fish days. And right. So you're scratching, trying to scratch out a fish or two. And so what I'll do is if I do find something that works, I'll tr probably start out with that on the next trip even and okay. just keep consistent with that. But I haven't really got it to where I'm doing certain scents with different colors. It okay. just doesn't. But if you, got, if you got four rods out there or three rods, do three different scents, yeah. right? Instead of just doing the same one on two or three of them, go different in every one until you find out what they're biting on. Okay, yeah. so pretty common knowledge, you know, something that you need to pay attention to, of course, depending on how many rods that you have out there. Uh, and some of the one of the other questions was, well, how do we compete with boats that got six or eight rods out there? You don't. No. If you've only got one or two rods going, you have to make your your baits different. Or hopefully, I mean, we're all this is all speculation. Try to make your baits different than what theirs are, so maybe you stand out. But don't try to compete with guide boats or other boats that are out there with six or eight rods and bling going everywhere. That's just not something that you're going to be able to do. It's just don't frustrate yourself over things that you just don't have any control over. Just manage your baits as best you can, keep your scent right, and, and take Steve's advice. Rotate those scents and find what it is they want on that particular day, because it's gonna change. I mean, it's just one of those things. Uh, this upcoming segment, though, we're gonna talk about here, and we've got a couple of different colors that they brought in. Um, three, right? You've got the natural, the blue, and the chartreuse, which are obviously the most popular colors to fish, right? Uh, all their different versions of scent. But one of the questions I'm gonna ask Jason specifically, and Steve, this upcoming egg bite, right? And it's kind of kicked off a little bit. There's been some stuff going on out there. Temperatures are somewhat there, but how you might improve if you only have one or two different versions of eggs, how you might be able to make those eggs fish better on any given day, because it changes day to day. One day your baits could be the best there is, and the next, <laughs> nope. And that's one of the reasons why it's as frustrating as it is. So we're gonna cut to a break, okay? When we come back, we're gonna be at the Kershaw tech cam we're going to go over some different baits talk about uh prawns different ways that you can maybe just be more effective uh, with some of the procure products so don't go anywhere we'll be right back outdoor gps is brought to you by chevy silverado and the impressive new turbo max engine flex your muscle with the strongest most advanced silverado ever official truck of outdoor gps 